Steve Lacey has been having explosive growth recently after his hit single Bad Habit, his latest studio album Gemini Writes, and his seemingly random matching tattoos with Lil Uzi Vert and Kanye West. On top of that, many of his songs have been reaching a wider audience recently thanks to TikTok. Steve Lacey has more eyes on him than ever before. But with this new influx of fans, some may be unaware that Steve has a fascinating music career prior to his explosion. From producing for Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and Mac Miller, to collaborating with Tyler the Creator and being an important member of the internet, this is the rise of Steve Lacey. So, Steve Lacey was born in Compton, California on May 23rd, 1998. He lived in a nicer situation compared to a lot of his peers and was also sent to nicer schools by his mom. He fell in love with the guitar at a young age because of the game Guitar Hero and started playing the real guitar when he was about 10 years old. When Steve was in high school, he was attending a LA performing arts high school and played in the school's band. It was at that school that he met a man by the name of Jamil Bruner, who used to be a keyboard player for the internet. Fun fact, Jamil is also Thundercat's brother. Steve saw Jamil making a beat and it invoked his curiosity curiosity which would eventually get him into beat making. He also dabbled in a little bit of rapping early on but mostly focused on singing and producing. Jamil was encouraging Steve to get involved with his band, the internet, and started bringing him along to studio sessions. After going to a few sessions, he eventually joined the band. For those who are unaware, the internet is a band that was signed to Odd Future back in the day, and a few Odd Future members were also members of the internet, like Sid the Kid and Matt Martians. The internet had a couple projects out before Steve joined, and they were a pretty talented group. Steve also had a lack of resources, so he was producing for the most part on his phone. He would email and DM people beats hoping to get placements. He also had some vocals on the song Palace Slash Curse which also featured Tyler the Creator. The album Ego Death performed extremely well and even received a Grammy nomination which allowed for Steve to attend the Grammys at age 17. That's something that most people cannot say they've done. Thanks to his work on Ego Death with the internet, he became a pretty high demand producer. Keep in mind in this time, Steve was still in high school and received a Grammy nomination his senior year and he couldn't even tour because he had to go to school. He says in an interview with GQ you know that end of the year talk you have with your teacher where they're like, what are you about to do? I was like, I'm going to produce and tour next month. And then I had the Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole features months after that talk. I literally graduated and went on tour. I wasn't dumb. And yes, you heard it correctly. Steve has also produced the song Pride for Kendrick Lamar. And he also produced Fold and Clothes by J. Cole. Another fun fact, he produced the song Jet Fuel by Mac Miller. He made the beat for Kendrick Lamar's Damn. But eventually, Kendrick ended up giving it to Mac and it ended up on swimming. By the time high school was over, Steve had a super impressive amount of accomplishments under his belt but he was just getting started. Before Steve officially launched his solo career, he did have a few singles and Lucy's on SoundCloud, but officially in 2017, he launched his solo career with the release of Steve Lacey's Demo, which is a project that was actually mostly recorded and produced on his iPhone entirely by himself. He spoke about how he produced his music in a TED Talk and it was super inspiring. He showed clips from some of his songs in GarageBand in the TED Talk and showed how he would layer vocals and produce. The song Dark Red performed extremely well and garnered him even more attention. He was also featured on Tyler the Creator's Flower Boy on the song 911 where he assisted on the bridge and he's also credited for playing the guitar on the song glitter at some point during all of this he would switch over from his iphone to a laptop and it's pretty obvious to see how his musical quality has improved since he's made that switch in 2018 the internet released the album hive mind which featured many more vocals from steve unlike the previous as of now this is the last album that the internet has released and each member has been focusing on their solo careers the following year in 2019 steve released his first album apollo 21 right after his 21st birthday this album would give Steve his second Grammy nomination and his first nomination as a solo artist. This album performed pretty well, especially thanks to songs like Enside. By the end of 2019, he had two Grammy nominations and an impressive catalog of production placements with only one album. However, he was still fairly underground even though he did have a strong fan base and was pretty well known in the music community. But as much as people hate to admit it, I would say that recently, thanks to TikTok, he's been getting a lot more buzz than he had been, with the platform repopularizing some of his older songs and also boosting some of his newer songs. In 2020, he released his compilation album titled The Lo-Fi's that contained old SoundCloud songs, leaks, demos, throwaways, and instrumentals. The following year, he had some other impressive placements such as playing the guitar and writing for the song Gravity by Brent Fayez. He also has writing credits on Donda, which I find super interesting, but it does make sense now that Kanye and him were pictured together, and he was also seen at Kanye's listening event last year. By this point in Steve's career, he was very successful and was on a steady incline ever since he joined the music industry, but in 2022, almost 
almost 10 years later, he would see another huge change. In July of 2022, Steve released his second studio album, which would be a huge success, and that album was titled Gemini Writes. It had three main singles, Mercury, Sunshine, and Bad Habit, which would become the album's smash hit. The majority of the album was produced by Steve himself and had his signature sound, although in my opinion, it sounded a lot more crisp and poppy than some of his previous work. With multiple songs and remixes from the album blowing up on TikTok, it has been getting a significant amount of attention. Also, Tyler the Creator has been promoting the album heavily, which I think has probably helped its success a little bit. Steve has been getting so popular that tons of fans are complaining about ticket prices for his upcoming tour. People speculate that his team and him underestimated how many tickets they would sell and how popular he is, which is why they booked smaller venues, which is why people are reselling all their tickets. But regardless, Steve is extremely popular. Even just the other week, he was pictured with Lil Uzi Vert and Kanye West and everyone was talking about it because they got matching tattoos and it caught the internet off guard when they were all pictured together. Regardless, Steve Lacey has had a huge spike in popularity, making him the most popular he's ever been and it's very well deserved. His constant rise in hard work over the years has not been in vain and he's still just getting started. Let me know what you guys think about Steve Lacey in the comments below. If you like this video, you might like my video where I cover Dominic Fike and his rise to fame as they make somewhat similar music and they're both pretty talented artists. Other than that though, I hope you guys did enjoy. This has been Many Balls and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.